Hello everybody and welcome back to Creation Myths. Today we are going to cover a creation myth and it is the frequently heard claim that evolutionists must assume human chimp common ancestry in order to defend their ideas. So let's start off with why creationists care about this one. This has to do with something called the Time to Most Recent Common Ancestor or TMRCA. And the time to most recent common ancestor is this concept where you can look at a series of genetic sequences and you can look at the differences in those sequences. And you can, based on knowledge of how fast sequences diverge from each other within a specific species, based on how fast differences accumulate in these sequences, you can look at a population and work backwards based on that rate of accumulation and calculate how far in the past that population must have shared a common ancestor. So this is how you calculate the time to most recent common ancestor. Now you can do this for various parts of the genome of Homo sapiens, most famously the Y chromosome and the mitochondrial DNA. When you do that, you get a age range uh, for the time to most recent common ancestor for the mitochondrial DNA of one to 200,000 years, and for the Y chromosome, two to 300,000 years in the past. Obviously, these two dates invalidate a young Earth timeline, which requires that these most recent common ancestors be within the last four to 6,000 years. So young Earth creationists need some way to discredit these calculations. The creationist argument basically comes down to, you can't trust those dumb evolutionists, they're dishonest. They have to assume human chimp common ancestry in order to get their numbers. Basically what creationists will claim is that the evolutionists say, well, humans and chimps diverged X number of years ago, 6 million, 7 million, 10 million, whatever it is, somewhere in that, in that range, right? And we can look at the level of divergence between humans and chimps, apply that rate across that seven to eight million year range, and then apply that same rate of divergence, that same rate of mutation accumulation within Homo sapiens. And when you do that, you get the time to most recent common ancestor numbers I just gave you. A relatively recent example of this comes to us from the YouTube channel Biblical Genetics, which is the channel of Dr. Rob Carter of Creation Ministries International. Uh, I'll link this video down below where he makes this claim twice in the first mm, four minutes or so of the video. Here are the two clips, take a listen. I want to share with you some of my thoughts on a new project that I've been working on. It's actually in response to a challenge from an evolutionist, a, a well-known skeptic who jumps on me frequently. That's me, and yes, we're doing it again. Stop saying wrong, dishonest things, and it won't keep happening. Um, but basically, it's people claiming that you cannot measure mutation rates today and use that to say how long ago mitochondria leave and or, or how long ago uh, Y chromosome Adam lived. You silly creationists, that's not the way it works. You have to use a phylogenetic rate, which is performed by assuming a common ancestry between two species, like say humans and chimpanzees. If you use the evolutionary rate, yes, you get one that's very far back in time and it's not a biblical date and it actually would contradict the Bible if you do that. But in order to use that rate, you have to assume evolution is true. You have to assume humans and chimpanzees have a common ancestor. You have to assume humans and chimpanzees have a common ancestor. So let's talk about why the creationists are wrong on this one. It's actually really simple. There's no assumption of human chimp common ancestry required in order to calculate human TMRCAs that are in the hundreds of thousands of years. It really isn't more complicated than that. So here's how we do this. You take a group of individuals, which in this figure right here are shown in blue. So these individuals are members of a population that exists in the present. The key thing is that this group of individuals has a common ancestor in the past at a known time. So this time interval here in red, that is a known time within hundreds or thousands of years. So we're not talking about anything, you know, outside of documented human history. We're dealing with things within the young earth timeline. You don't actually need to go back more than two or 300 years to document a mutation rate that puts you outside of the young earth timeline. So what you do is you take your population 
you document the level of divergence in whatever DNA sequence it is you're looking at, the mitochondrial DNA, Y chromosome, whatever. You document your divergence, and given that you know the amount of time back to the common ancestor, you can calculate the rate at which differences accumulate within this population. That's how you do this technique without assuming anything about common ancestry, without using any data outside of Homo sapiens. So you calculate your substitution rate over this known interval, and then you apply that substitution rate to all of Homo sapiens. For whatever DNA sequence you looked at within this population, you can look at that same sequence across all of humanity and say, how diverse in all of humanity are the mitochondrial DNA sequences? What is the maximum level of divergence across all human Y chromosomes? And then we can take this rate, this empirically calculated, directly observed rate, and we can apply that to all of the diversity within Homo sapiens and calculate that time to most recent common ancestor. Again, we're not using any assumptions outside of modern human history to do this math. And when we do that, we get those consensus numbers for the human time to most recent common ancestor, hundreds of thousands of years in the past. And then, of course, what you have to do here is check your work. Do this type of analysis multiple times and make sure the numbers match up with each other. Check these calculations against the calculations that do assume human chimp common ancestry and see if they match up with each other. And guess what happens when you do that? everything is consistent with each other, you get approximately the same answer in that one to 300,000 year range I just told you about. There are a lot of examples of this in the scientific literature, so I will just give you a few which are all going to be linked below. The first paper here is called The Founding of Mitochondrial DNA Lineages of Tristan de Cunha Islanders. This is a really cool one because the island of Tristan de Cunha in the Atlantic Ocean was only permanently settled in the early 1800s. We know exactly when, and we know exactly who. And when you do the math I just described on their mitochondrial DNA, you get a distant time to most recent common ancestor, not one that is consistent with the young Earth timeline. Then there's a paper from 2009, Human Y Chromosome Base Substitution Mutation Rate Measured by Direct Sequencing in a Deep-Rooted Pedigree. So this paper, uh, I think this one had to do with a Chinese family. So you had a group of individuals with a known common ancestor, I think it was in the 1800s, so it was just a couple hundred years ago. And same thing, you do the math, you get the slower mutation accumulation rate that is incompatible with the Young Earth timeline. Our third one here is really interesting. It's looking at uh, Icelandic populations, which is great because we have a very clear, well-documented history for Iceland. It was only permanently settled uh, about a thousand years ago. So this is called the Y chromosome point mutation rate in humans. This was published in, I think, 2015. And same thing, you have a, uh, a an Icelandic group that uh, share common ancestry just within the last two or three hundred years. You do the math and you get a distant time to most recent common ancestor. Funny note about these last two I just showed you here is that noted evolutionist Dr. Nathaniel Jensen of Answers in Genesis noted both of these papers in his recent book Traced. In that book he tries to use the Y chromosome mutation rate to prove that uh, humans are young as a species, uh, that, they're, that the mutation rate is compatible with the Young Earth timeline. He actually had to hand wave away these two papers for reasons that are beyond the scope of this video, but he comes up with reasons to not count these papers because he acknowledges that if you take these papers at face value, it invalidates the Young Earth timeline. These papers do not base their math on human chimp common ancestry. So you want to know somebody who disagrees with Dr. Rob Carter's video clips that I showed you a few minutes ago? Dr. Nathaniel Jensen from Answers in Genesis. The last example I'll tell you about is a really cool paper from 2009. It's called Correcting for Purifying Selection an Improved Human Mitochondrial Molecular Clock. I love what the authors do in this paper because they propose a model where you have mutations 
that get weeded out of the human population over time due to natural selection. And they test this model against multiple calibration points where you have two human populations with a known divergence date. Things like island colonization events like Vanuatu or the Canary Islands that have very well-defined dates and well-known sister populations. We know in both of those cases where the islanders migrated from originally. So we can test their model against these very well-documented divergence dates, again, within recent human history. We're not going outside of a young Earth timeline here. And when you do that, wouldn't you know it, you get the same answer we've been talking about. These time to most recent common ancestor calculations give you results in the one to 300,000 year range. And again, all these papers are linked below, so check them out if you want more details. So in summary, the creationist claim is that evolutionists must assume human chimp common ancestry to calculate distant human times to most recent common ancestors, times that are in the hundreds of thousands of years rather than within 10,000 years. The response to this is no, we can calculate TMRCAs in the one to 300,000 year range exclusively with recent Homo sapien sequences and known times to common ancestors. It's not more complicated than that. There are plenty of examples of this math being done in the literature and getting the consensus answer that don't involve any assumptions of human chimp common ancestry. So evolutionists must assume human chimp common ancestry to make our math work? No. That is a creation myth. Thank you for watching. Please hit like, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, leave a comment, share, and don't get fooled.